Professor Portman's classic experiments on elasmobranchs were performed at the Marine Laboratory at Akashon, near Bordeaux, between 1920 and 1925. These experimental studies showed histologically that endolymphatic high drops or endolymphatic hypertension was produced. We evaluated these almost 50 years after the original experiment was performed. At the time Professor Portman did these studies, the concept of endolymphatic high drops as a pathologic entity was not known because the description by Hall, Pike, and Cairns was made in 1938. We had the opportunity to reevaluate Professor Portman's histologic material, which was saved, and this showed endolymphatic hypertension. We also performed studies at the Lerner Marine Laboratory on the island of Bimini in the Bahamas using lemon sharks. An example of endolymphatic high drops in the lemon shark is seen here. The right side was always left as a control and the left side was operated. So we have a built-in control. Here the endolymphatic sac was removed on the left side and we have a normal endolymphatic sac on the right side. This cross section has the brain in the middle and the right ear and the left ear. By comparison, you can see a normal saccular membrane on the right side and a slightly distended one on the left side. In the normal animal, we have a saccular membrane flap which shows normal epithelium with loose subepithelial connective tissue and multiple small vessels. On the experimental side, this same flap is constricted because of pressure. The epithelium does not appear normal. The connective tissue is much more dense, and there are fewer uh, micro vessels. Utilizing the scanning electron microscope, this is normal crista ampullaris sensory hair cells. This stereocilia bundle and a normal kinocilium is uh, the normal view for lemon sharks. It is much longer than in higher animals. This, by contrast, is from the operated or left side of the Christampularis in an animal in which endolymphatic high drops was produced. You can still recognize the norm uh, stereocilia bundle, but at the distal end are these globular deformities, which are quite regular. This is evidence of hair cell damage. Whether or not this is reversible or not is uh, not known at the present time, but raises certain questions about uh, whether or not this endolymphatic hypertension and the mechanical effects of this on the sensory hair cells can be reversed. We were unable in our uh, behavioral studies to reproduce the abnormal swimming patterns observed by Professor Portman, but more importantly, we have a model in an animal for uh, endolymphatic high drops on a purely mechanical basis and can show the effects on the sensory hair cells of this uh, experimental condition.